Well, hello, critical drinker viewers. It is me again. Yours truly is back. And well, I'm back with another Super Chat catch up because, uh, as you probably guessed, we had a ton of uh, Super Chats left over from the last uh, open bar stream. Um, there was no way we were going to get through them all in the night. So here I am to catch up on them and uh, make sure that no Super Chat goes unanswered. Um, sadly, the long man couldn't do, couldn't join me tonight. He's busy doing real BBC, so I'm going to do my best to entertain you myself. And, uh, well, if there's a question that was specifically for a member of the panel that night, I will do my best to just guesstimate what they would have said in response. So, hey, I'll do my best to keep you entertained. Uh, so, anyway, without further ado, the first one that was on the list was... Roy King, who says, uh, <clears throat> that's the Witcher's origins? Wow, I thought it was wizards performing brutal experiments on orphan boys in order to create a cast of enslaved super soldiers, but I guess that was just a fever dream. Indeed, yes, we got this much more CW-like ending uh, and, and conclusion to the origin of the Witchers, where it was just, uh, just a guy who wanted to sacrifice himself to save the lady he loved um, and take her place, and uh, wow... What a letdown, eh? It proves that uh, sometimes you don't always need all these questions answered. Sometimes it's better to just keep things mysterious. But eh, I guess the when they thought that there was money to be bilked out of it, they were happy to keep doing it. But damn, what a letdown. <clears throat> Joe said, please don't insult Return of the Jedi. It's not great, but I love it. It's infinitely better than this trash. Keep up the great work. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I think I was just using that as a point of comparison when we we're talking about the payoffs and stuff. Uh, with storytelling. Uh, yeah, Return of the Jedi. Um, I don't hate it as a, as much as a lot of other Star Wars fans do. Like, I know it gets a lot of uh, a lot of criticism for the Ewoks and, you know, the assault on Jabba's palace not really making a whole lot of sense with everyone going in piecemeal. Um, but I think it's still a fantastic movie. Um, the big emotional payoffs that you get at the end are, are more than worth it. Uh, so yeah, I'm fine with that film. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry to have dragged it through the mud for this. Uh, Beach Lover said, where is Az? He should participate in this conversation. Uh, f unfortunately, Az was busy that night. Um, and, you know, I don't want to keep asking him back time after time. You know, it's, it's obviously a big commitment, um, for a person to say, right, I'm going to give up my whole evening to do this live stream. So... Um, yeah, we don't tend to ask the same people back every week. It's just not fair on them. Um, for the same reason that, you know, me or Mahler or whoever else doesn't get invited on Friday Night Tights every week because we're not always available. But uh, I'm sure As will be back soon enough. Don't you worry. Uh, Dali Magnus says, Mublishi, please convince RA to come out of retirement. We need him now more than ever. Also, high metal. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> nice. Uh, I don't know what we can do about RA, though, for, for coming out of retirement. And that's Mauler's domain. Uh, TR says, Dragon Tales had better writing than Blood Origin. I think pretty much anything had better writing than Blood Origin. It was an absolute disaster. Um, Freedom Bug said, Fuck off, show. Very well said. Uh, SRWDE said, Hey, Drinker, did you ever see the movie PCU? I found out earlier this year it got cancelled so you can't buy it or stream it. I think it would make great comparison video to modern Hollywood. Mm, no, I'm not too familiar with that one, mate. I don't know about that one. Uh, Stug says, Critical Drinker likes to kiss statues of Marduk. He believes they grant him divine inspiration for his stories. Metal likes to watch. I mean, well, how did you find out about this, <laughs> about this stuff? <laughs> I thought that was our secret, damn it. Um, Mad About Hatter says, let's be honest guys, there was such a bad stench of B.O. that The Witcher didn't even show. Uh, hail as, hail all. Thank you. And, uh, well, what can I say? The Witcher was a, <laughs> was a terrible show. Um, and it stank pretty much wherever it went. Uh, Slack Attack says, because of you fine chaps, I've been inspired to start my own review page, which will hopefully lead to YouTube. The downside is watching terrible shows like Witcher, uh, B.O. Um, how do you keep your sanity? Um, it's not easy. I mean, in my case, it involves lots of alcohol. That's my coping mechanism for all this garbage. But, uh, yeah, it is tough going. And, man, it's nice on those rare occasions where we get to watch something genuinely good. And we can just, uh, yeah, we can talk about it. And it, it makes us feel nice. Um, so it is good to get that little balance occasionally. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the time you just got to power through, man. Aiken says, what? Kids wanting the payoff without making the effort? Never. Do these writers have any real-world experience? Um, have they ever had to bleed to complete anything? Uh, probably not, no. 
Uh, that's why they don't understand how to write characters who have to go through challenges. They don't like it. They can't handle it themselves, so they don't want to represent it on screen. And, uh, well, this is what you end up with. And uh, you end up with a whole generation of characters that nobody cares about. So, yeah, bring back writers that have actually done things. People that have actually lived lives. That would be nice. <clears throat> uh, Casey Boyd says, I'm confused over Rings of Power. <laughs> You're not the only one. Uh, YouTuber reviews are bad, yet it had 100 million viewers, therefore justified another season. Is it really a flop with that many views, even though it's not good? Well, this is the problem that you run into, right? Because... Uh, when it comes to streaming, you don't really know what the, the view counts are. You don't know how many hours were watched. Um, and they can they can couch things in these like misleading terms. Like, well, there was 25 million views for the first episode. And then we're not really going to talk about episode 3 or 4 or 5. You know, or there was, you know, this many hours watched within the first two weeks or something like that. They can manipulate the statistics to back up whatever point they want to make about how successful this thing is. Um, but when it, the only time you get accurate ratings is when you have, you know, broadcast television, when you get Nielsen ratings and they can't hide it, they can't obfuscate it and they can't manipulate it. It's just the cold, hard facts of who's watching. Uh, and you just don't get that with streaming services. So, um, yeah, you're never going to quite know how successful it was. Um, but the fact that like the actual fan reaction to it was so negative, um, it just means that, you know, fewer and few, fewer people are going to tune in. Why are you going to tune in to see something that you didn't like? You know, so I would expect the ratings for season two to be absolutely in the gutter. The fact that it's going to be a couple of years before it comes out as well is even worse. Not only will people uh, have hated the first season, but by that point, just apathy and disinterest will have set in and people just won't watch it. And this is the problem. Um, I think when you're a streaming service like Amazon Prime, the measure of success that you have, the one that you actually care about as a business, is how many people signed up uh, in order to watch this show. How many people signed up for Amazon Prime because they really wanted to watch Rings of Power. Uh, that's their metric for success. And yeah, I don't think many people did, particularly after you get past that, that initial rush of uh, of you know interest that accompanied the first couple of episodes. Once you're past that... There ain't nothing there, and I think they know it. Uh, Ant Rodriguez says, Every time you guys drop a take, I think about that Snoop Dogg click where he, <laughs> clip where he says, This motherfucker don't miss. I mean, what can I say? We, we're we honest as, as much as we can be, and we're fair as much as we can be. Uh, and we're just giving you our unfiltered opinions. Nobody's paying us for this, unlike uh, professional reviewers. So, you know, I guess we just stick with that, and uh, people seem to appreciate it. So thanks. Uh, August Varney says, uh, it felt like watching In the Name of the King. <laughs> I think that's an insult to In the Name of the King. Like At least that had Jason Statham and, and Burt, uh, Burt Reynolds in it. So you had some kind of interest to watch on screen. Uh, Sam School says, the message. I know, the message is everywhere when it comes to The Witcher. Charlie Vox says, with such an abundance of garbage shows and movies in 2022, I'd like to hear each one of you pick your best and worst show or movie of the year. Spider-Man No Way Home is the best and She-Hulk is the worst. Uh, I'm not going to dispute that, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of my worst ones came towards the end of the year. You know, we had Willow, garbage. We had uh, Butcher Blood Origin, absolute garbage. We had Rings of Power, garbage. And we had uh, She-Hulk, garbage. All terrible shows. Um... You know, we had really crappy movies like uh, Multiverse of Madness. You know, we had Thor Love and Thunder. Wakanda Forever was pretty crap as well. So, yeah, there was pre plenty of crap to choose from on the movie front as well. In terms of good ones, yeah, Everything Everywhere All at Once was a top one for me. Um, top Gun Maverick, obviously. Um, House of the Dragon, probably the best TV show of the year. Just, uh, yeah. Turned out way better than it had any right to. So, and Stranger Things season four, I think we're on, uh, and Cobra Kai. So there were good, you know, there were good shows on. It's just uh, it feels like they were overwhelmed by the garbage. Uh, Ant Rodriguez says I had a talk with my friend recently about the Jurassic World movies, and he unironically told me to shut up and like it. Proof that film discussion with normies is dead. <laughs> God, <laughs> this is the thing. I mean, damn. You wonder if people like that have seen good movies. You know, if they watched the first Jurassic Park movie back in the 90s or even, you know, subsequently. Uh, there, There's a good example of how you can do that kind of film well. And 
have it be intelligent and thought provoking and awe inspiring um, versus the Jurassic World films. And yeah, it's really sad if that's the mindset of people. Like, yeah, just don't question it. Just shut up and watch it and, you know, digest the content. Uh, you know, all of us do the things that we do because we know movies can be better than that. We know they, they can do more than that. And that's what we want from them. We don't need every film to be an Oscar winner. I certainly don't. You know, there's still plenty to be said for just like big dumb action movies that are just entertaining or, you know, um, standard disaster movies or, or whatever you want to call them. You know, films that have just got a bit of heart to them, but like they're relatively simple and well done. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I don't need every film, like I say, to be some mind bending um, Oscar winning um, piece of art, but like they have to have something to them. Jeez. Um, Words of Paradise says, Shameless self-promo. Major fan drinker and you inspired me to start my own channel covering ridiculous Hollywood and politics. Well done, sir. There's a target-rich environment for you there, that's for sure. Uh, Words of Paradise is what it's called, so thank you. Here's to hoping that Warhammer is good. Well, we all hope that, man, and best of luck with your channel, mate. Ryan says, They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, but in the case of Jonathan Kasdan, oh yeah, uh, he fell and rolled about 100 yards away because he's not his father. Just suffered through the latest Willow, pure proof that nepotism is bad. That's the problem, mate. Eh? Like, I don't know why there's this assumption that a son is going to inherit his father's talents. I mean, damn, look at Jaden Smith. He ain't he ain't his dad, that's for sure. Uh, David Peterson says, Arrowstorm makes better stuff than streaming. Um, fair enough, yeah. Um, Anatard Lord of Derps says, Witcher, Blood Origin, and Rings of Power elves went... Uh, elves weren't sorry weren't elves uh they just suffer from jacobson syndrome <laughs> i loved your avatar 2 review drink art thank you very much man and uh yeah they don't look anything like elves i know that in the world of the witcher like elves are not like the ones you get in lord of the rings <clears throat> you know they're not immortal they're not like these beautiful ethereal beings they're they're much more grounded and uh and basic than that um so I guess I can sort of forgive that to some extent, but there's not even an attempt to make them look anything other than just regular old humans. You know, the, the actors playing them are all different shapes and sizes like humans. The, the only thing that marks them out, literally the only thing is they got pointed ears. That's it. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit crap and it looks a bit cheap. Um, Eric Santucci says, is it true that this show ironic, unironically has a, and then everyone clapped moment? It is true. There's no irony there. Uh, it's literally um, diverse female lead uh, takes out a toxic white male who's trying to harass a bar girl um, in, in a tavern, um, takes down two of his friends because she can totally do that apparently, and then everyone claps. Everyone gives her a round of applause and she goes back to singing. And wow, yeah. It's just, uh, you know, it's a feminist wish fulfillment fantasy is all it is really. It's really sad to see it played out on screen. <laughs> It's like it was written by a 12-year-old. Uh, Almanac says, Did She-Hulk dethrone Star Wars The Last Jedi as the worst uh, filmed content that you have ever seen? I mean, it depends on your, your definition, I suppose, because this is a TV show versus a movie, but, um, you know, taken as the sum total of its awfulness. I think, personally, I find Last Jedi more offensive because I actually had an emotional investment in some of the characters. You know, I cared about that world. I didn't care a single bit about She-Hulk. Barely knew anything about her anyway. Um, so I didn't really have that that emotional connection to it to begin with. It was just generally a terrible show. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the the acting, the dialogue, um, the sheer lack of effort that's put into every aspect of it, I'd say it's a worse production than The Last Jedi. Uh, just in terms of like objective quality. Uh, Ryan Bailey says, don't besmirch Star Trek Voyager by comparing it to anything made in 2022. I actually like Voyager, haven't liked much of anything from 2022. I mean, I agree, yeah. Um, when I was doing that comparison, it was more just comparing the, the level of um, production value that had gone into it, you know. Voyager had its, its, its good episodes for sure, but it wasn't, you know, you could tell that it wasn't done on a huge budget. Whereas you look at something like Witcher Blood Origin... You'd assume they had a reasonable budget for it, but they were they were reaching for these epic scenes of like an entire city that's rising up in revolution against their overlords. 
uh, and it boils down to basically 20 or 30 extras, uh, all wearing like cheap, um, identical clothing, uh, all looking like they came from central casting. None of them look like they can be arsed in the slightest. It looks like they've been doing that stuff all day and they are just done with it. They can't be bothered anymore. Uh, and that's that's your rebellion scene right there. Uh, and it's just so, it's so cheap looking. Um, Dorian says, if they got a season two, then they'll cast a Helen Kellen, sorry, Helen Keller character. Um, pfft, yeah, I wouldn't put anything past them at this point. Um, Mandanara says modern screenwriters learn to write doing fanfics on Tumblr and it shows that's very true uh, their shit tier writing only gets attention attached to it uh, a better IP yeah that's it um, under any sort of meritocracy these people wouldn't even be working but somehow they find themselves uh, in charge of these incredible IPs like The Witcher is, is a, a huge universe that you could do so much with you know not just the books, which were, you know, huge successes in their own right, but the video games that expanded upon them um, and really brought them into the mainstream in, in like, North America and, and Western Europe. Um, you know, it can be done. It can be done well. And then you get these absolute morons who are put in charge of adapting it for TV and they just squander it because they don't care. They don't appreciate the incredible opportunity that they've been given. They're just out for themselves. They're totally in business for themselves to tell their own story the way they want to tell it. Uh, that's why you get something like Witcher Blood Origin. You know, you had <laughs> the, the proper Witcher TV series where they're begrudgingly, you know, making or doing their adaptation of this material. You can almost feel the resentment like radiating from the screen that they have to like stick to this lore and that they have to have Geralt as the theoretical main character. And you can tell that they're doing everything in their power to shift the narrative focus onto Yennefer or Ciri uh, or Triss or basically anyone who's who's not Geralt. Um, and so what you then get is like Witcher Blood Origin where they're just allowed to do whatever they want. And that's the Witcher version that they wanted to do. You know, the one that's entirely female-centric, that's uh, that's basically a diverse um, <laughs> diversity and inclusion seminar. Um, absolute garbage to your storytelling because they don't have anything to work with as their template. They literally have to come up things out, out of their own imagination and they don't really have any. That's why they should never be writing in the fantasy genre in the first place. Uh, and this is what you end up with. And it's very gratifying to see it getting absolutely demolished by the fans. Um, Rangi says, so Gary, when did we get more streaming of Witcher? You could call the series Gary of Rivia. <laughs> I would I would honestly love to see Gary play in The Witcher. <laughs> I think it'd be great. <laughs> Casey Boyd says, seems like Cavill cares more about Witcher source material than Sapkowski. Uh, I haven't heard anything from Jim. Maybe he just wants the money. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of uh, the author... I don't think he's terribly impressed with the, the TV show. Um, apparently, he didn't like the games that much either, which is a real shame because I thought they were great. But, uh, you know, maybe he's not exactly a born businessman. Uh, I heard that he took, like, upfront payments rather than a share of the profits, which was a massive, <laughs> massive misstep on his part. But, hey, what can you do? Um, I, he must be raging at the TV show, though. That's got to be awful to see. Uh, Slain Hope says, The writer's covering Henry... Uh, to crap, uh, what's that? Covering Henry in crap to introduce Geralt as a literal toxic male that makes everyone in the room wretch seems much more vindictive now. Uh, yes, it very much does. Um, yeah, you can you can see how much they resent him because they know their show's not popular. They know that he is, and they know that he's partly popular because he wants to stick to the lore and he tries to correct them. And they hate it. They hate being called out. They hate anyone. Um, questioning their judgment and actually having to justify the things they do because they've probably been surrounded by people that um, praised them their whole lives and gave them participation trophies for everything. And now suddenly they've got people that um, are calling them out on their crap and saying, no, this is this sucks, what you've written. This doesn't make any sense. It's nothing like the books. What are you doing? Uh, and so, of course, they, they can't actually argue with them. Their only response is to try and take petty revenge by all these like ridiculous hit piece articles but you know i think ultimately he's gonna have the last laugh um 
Elliot says, "What's going on? What's going on in Lauren Hisrich's head right now?" Um, well, judging by the quality of her writing on this show, probably not a whole lot. It's it's going to be like that that Simpsons thing where it's like inside Homer's head. It's just like a, a guy like riding around on a tiny little tricycle in this big empty black space. <laughs> Um, she's probably mad that people don't see the genius of her show um, but hey, let her be mad um, she brought this on herself uh, Bullet Sponge says Drinker, speaking of Ryan Johnson I watched Knives Out for the first time with my family last night and I was the only one who could see how bad the plot was and how incompetent Daniel Craig character was as a detective yeah, well, I'm glad you I'm glad you saw how bad it was um, I'm glad you recognised that because uh, yeah, it's, it's not a good movie uh, Mauler and I um, and a bunch of other people, we we did a, a happy hour on it, or a not-so-happy hour as the case may be, and kind of tore the plot to shreds, so, yeah, uh, it's not good. Um, Sith Cake says, you guys just don't get it. Boats fly because they look up, and cinder blocks sink because they're square, and that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the rewritten version of that scene where, like, they've, they've overdubbed it, and the guy's just like, uh... <laughs> Boats are floaty because they look up at shiny sky, and stones sink because they look down. Do you get it? <laughs> it's so simple, but so funny. Uh, Mad About Hatter says, In the Pompeii ruins, there's a brothel where there's still the drawings on the walls of special positions. So basically, you'd go in, choose the girl, choose the position, and Bob's your uncle. It was a sign of the times. I, I think that's... Pretty logical, really. You know, it's like ordering from, from uh, Amazon or something. You know, you choose the, the package that you want and uh, away you go. And <laughs> there it is for you. Satisfaction guaranteed. <laughs> I love the idea of, like, these, these Roman brothels. I'd love to have visited one. Uh, Jake Norfield says, Michelle Yeoh was my favourite Bond girl. Uh, yeah, she was great back in the day. And she's, she's a good actress, that's the thing. But uh, she keeps appearing in terrible stuff. Tommy, my cousin lost my car, says, Hello, drinker. Love your videos. What other franchises do you think Hollywood will, will ruin next? Uh, probably Highlander. I think they're going to do a remake of that, apparently. Ironically, with Henry Cavill in the role, so I've got a tiny bit of hope that maybe he can steer it on the right path, but uh, yeah, that'll probably be the next one. Um, Indiana Jones is already kind of ruined by Crystal Skull, but um, yeah, they're really going to seal the deal with the next one. That'll be stamped into the ground for all time. Uh, Anvex says, anything related to lore is a no-no, so let's go with the intersectional box checking of the off-brand circular objects. <laughs> that's it, that's all it is. Um, Your Mama's Llama says, are you guys going to do anything more with Star Wars theory when all the Star Wars shows come out in 2023? I'm excited for Mickelson as Thrawn in Ahsoka. I mean, yeah, I've, I've not really had much interaction with Star Wars theory, so I don't really know him. Um, I guess Gary or Mauler maybe is let touch base with them, but uh, yeah, they'd be better ones to answer that. Um, DB Dusso says, some of, the, some of the best this year that came to mind are the Orville Season 3, Reacher. Yeah, that was pretty good. House of the Dragon, very good. And God of War. Uh, this year really felt like a turning point for entertainment. Yeah, it's like I've, I've said previously, you know. It really feels like this is the point where um, normies have begun to reject this stuff. And you've had flop after flop that have really lost money for studios. And uh, I think Warner Brothers is the first domino to fall in terms of abandoning all this woke garbage and, you know, trying to bring in people that actually know what they're doing. Uh, it's the first, but it's not going to be the last, I don't think. So 2023 could be a very interesting year in terms of, like, studio reshuffles, um, buyouts, firings and hirings and stuff. So, yeah, uh, I can't wait to sit back and watch it happen. Um Replay Depot says, Realm United? Rampant famine? Completely disconnected leader? Sounds like communism done right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all they need is a few, like, uh, gulags for people to get shipped off to and their, their quids in. Joel Davis says, It's weird how casually people kill their family in modern fantasy shows. Speaks a lot for how the showrunners and writers uh, run their own morality. Yeah, that's very true. And, um, well, yeah. You could, you could have an absolute field day with the, the kind of morality that's at play in, in all these kind of shows and, and movies and stuff. Like, I've certainly covered it about why modern movies suck, teaching us awful moral lessons. It's because the people writing them don't have any moral backbone, uh, and it shows. Um, Sith Cake says, 
Blood Origin was BS. Everyone knows Jennifer Lawrence was the first Elven Empress. That is true, and she was also the first Witcher, so I don't know why she's not getting the recognition she deserves. Um, Fortune and Glory says, What a great lineup tonight. I like to think of y'all as the Avengers of the YouTube cinematic universe, taking the piss out of woke Hollywood. You're doing God's work, gentlemen. Thank you for the laughs and a happy new year. Thank you very much, man. I hope you had a happy new year too. Uh, Anvex says, even if it's just for bloopers, they should hire Az and Gundam to scream stuff at the crews for the inevitable making of to follow these net fails. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to see him on set, <laughs> just yelling at people. Jacob Revels says, There was some decorum in fantasy dialogue. Nowadays, writers want to write dialogue as if they're edgy 12-year-olds. Yeah, that's, that's the way I equated it when it came to shows like Blood Origin. It's like a 12-year-old writing it who's just discovered swear words for the first time, and so they throw them in everywhere. It's not impactful. It's not, you know, it's not interesting. It's just vulgar, you know, and it's not even, it's not even fun. It's not even funny. Uh, it's just tedious and tiresome, you know. It used to work in Game of Thrones because it was only used occasionally and it was done by people who actually spoke the lines like they meant it. Uh, now it's just garbage. Um... Bearded says, do the writers think that their writing is so bad uh, and the viewers are so dumb that if they don't tell us exactly what's happening that no one would ever know what is happening with the story? Pretty much, yeah. Um, I think they themselves are so dumb that they can't conceive of, of nuanced uh, storytelling that shows rather than tells. And so this is the best they can come up with. Henry Back to Play says, I think, or concluded, you have a lot of Sex in the City type writers writing nerd content for money, but they despise the genre and latest trends. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, particularly with something like She-Hulk, for example. You can tell that all of the people involved in this, they had no interest in comic books, they had no interest in superheroes. Uh, they wanted to write a Sex in the City, Ally McBeal type thing, um, and they were forced to do this. And it it absolutely shows like the absolute disdain for that they have for all of the tropes of of superhero storytelling um and the, the complete lack of knowledge that they have uh and so yeah it's it's an interesting one you kind of think well why are you even doing this if you clearly hate it but you know this is the gig that i guess they've been able to get and so they're gonna they're gonna do it uh, they're just gonna do a terrible job at it kevin o'neill says 2022 felt like a, a year-long episode of Best of the Worst. Yes, um, it was a target-rich environment, that's for sure, for terrible content. Um, Thorlax Attacks says, Lord, them rings. <laughs> Thanks. Kate J says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Kate. I'm curious, would you guys say that The Witcher Blood Origin is worse than Rings of Power? Can't imagine any fantasy show being worse than that. I think, I think it's worse, personally. Um, we had a chat about this during the stream. Um, my reason for it being worse is like, it genu genuinely made me feel angry while watching it, whereas Rings of Power was just blandly mediocre and, and you know, pretty shit for the most part. But uh, with watching the, the Witcher, I was genuinely angry. You know, it's like, this is so awful. How did they even get away with making this? So I think it might be worse. Motilicious says, another flop. Oh, go on, I wonder why. Also, who would you two cast for a Snowflame movie? I don't know about that. Um, don't know about Snowflame. Um, but yeah, like, more flops right at the end of the year. Uh, we went out not with a bang, but with a whimper. Uh, Norwegian Kryptonian says, can't wait for Elliot Page's Superman. <laughs> that was supposed. That was a weird rumour that was doing the rounds for a few days. I've no idea if there's anything in it, but my God. James Gunn, I dare you, I absolutely dare you, cast Elliot Page as Superman and just wait for the reaction. <laughs> Peace Theory says, what's up guys? Well, not an awful lot right now, I'm just catching up on Super Chats, it's just me and the critical doggos. Uh, Amigoville says, hey Drinker, any chance you'll be making a God of War Ragnarok video? There's a pretty good chance of that actually, I'm very much enjoying the game. Anthony Porter says, if the writing isn't good, the whole house of cards come tumbling down. Very true. It's the foundation upon which everything else is built. Uh, you have to get that right before you worry about almost anything else. Yeah, if the script's terrible, like, really not much way you can salvage it. Uh, Thug Life Bear says, The correct way to write Black Panther 2 should have been 1. T'Challa dies fighting. 2. Namor kills him. 3. Killmonger avenges him. They didn't take the open goal. I mean... It's going to be kind of hard for Killmonger to avenge him when he's dead already. But uh, yeah, the first two I could get. 
Um, you could have easily had T'Challa get killed by Namor, um, you know, with his Black Panther suit on, so it could have been really anyone. Um, I think Chadwick himself was in favour of just recasting the character, which again, I think it would be tough to do. It might be a tough sell, but I think they could have got away with it, um, if particularly if they made it clear that that was his wishes. Uh, it would have allowed them to tell the story a lot easier. Um, Moritz Strittmatter says, Maverick reminds me of Argentina winning the World Cup. One last superstar uh, and a solid team and no further message. That is true, yeah. Um, Christian Wolf says, I believe Henry of House Cavill will bring honour to the race of man again in Warhammer 40k. Oh man, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. No, oh, it's been stolen. <laughs> Uh, with 40k and shine a light in the darkness of this woke heresy. We can only hope because you cannot do a woke version of 40k. It has to be grim dark all the way. Uh, Shaker Silver says, The idea of Galadriel picking up a horse and throwing it is reminding me of suburban Sasquatch throwing a car, so I'm imagining the same awful quality. You should, yeah. Uh, Motalicious says, I used to fantasize about Harrison Ford, and by that I mean you used to fantasize about being Harrison Ford making out with Carrie Fisher. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she was pretty hot back in the day, before she kind of went crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> you did well, Harrison, you dirty dog. Uh, Mr. Wise Guy says, Mahler equals man of culture, preferring the third one. Fair enough, yeah. Um, Sam Samuel Lund says, we don't talk about Crystal Skull with Shia LaBeouf leading an army of monkeys through the trees to attack the Russians. Yeah, we'd, we'd all rather not talk about that. Um, yeah. Ugh, that was in that sort of post-Star Wars prequels period where George had just too much creative control. Shouldn't have done it. Uh, Julius Cominius says, Crusade is my favourite. Unmatched music, Arthurian medieval themes, and the only man who can play Indy's father, James Bond. Yeah, ah. Sean Connery and Harrison Ford, what an incredible pairing. Uh, we'll overlook the fact that I think Sean Connery was only about 15 years older than Harrison Ford, but hey, you know, he looked a lot older. And um, yeah, I just think it was a really good really good way to cap the trilogy, Last Crusade. Um, good action scenes, the byplay between Indy and his dad was great, and yeah, you couldn't have picked anyone else to match him apart from Sean Connery, so great stuff. Um, Zach Fala says, I really hope Henry Cavill just goes off on anyone if they mess with 40k. The dude's a chad and he cares for the stories and source materials. He absolutely does, yeah. I think it's hurting him in Hollywood, though. That's the sad thing. Uh, Mika Wilkinson says, howdy, fellas. Thank you. Hello to you. Bullet Sponge says, I voted Raiders and Raiders is my favourite, but to be honest, Crusade is the full package. Just plain awesome and is probably the best movie overall. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's... It's a really close call for me between Raiders and uh, and Crusade. I think Raiders probably edges it, but they're both great for me. Sean McClure says, "I forgot all of those uh, shoes. All of those shoes even happened. That is saying something. Uh, I'm not sure what that is." Uh, Misa Son said, uh, "Cowboy Bebop came up. came out in 1998. Yeah, the original anime." Um, Harold Arantz says, Is the Fall of Numenor book worth purchasing? Since the Tolkien estate and Amazon betrayed J.R.R. Tolkien, I don't trust stuff with the Tolkien name. Yeah, I mean, this is like something that's come out way after Tolkien's lifetime. Um, I'm not sure how it was pieced together, if it was ghostwritten or something, um, or if they used notes of his to try and piece together a, a book, but yeah, it's not proper Tolkien work, I don't think. It's not a book that he wanted to do. Uh, General Grievous says Arcane is the best TV show of 2022. Um, Arcane was was it previous year? I thought it was 2021. I'm getting mixed up with my years now, but yeah, Arcane was really good. I will give it that for sure. Uh, Tommy Gonzo says thoughts on Twin Peaks. Did you watch season three? I did not watch season three because I wasn't really mad keen on that idea of uh, going back to it after all that time, but. Um, I remember watching bits and pieces of the the original. Like this was like mid nineties, I think, when it came out. So I was just like a kid at the time, and didn't really appreciate it for what it was back then. It's just this weird, quirky, goofy show that was on, and you know, you'd watch it and not be entirely sure what the hell you were even seeing. Um, but I remember, I remember finding it very intriguing. Uh, I just never really had a chance to revisit it. 
Patrick Porlier says Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, that was a bad movie, that's for sure. Uh, Bomber 44, good starts next year. Operation Fortune and 65. Okay. Uh, Tesher Max says, man, if Tarantino ever retires, what directors are left that you can rely on, rely on for making good movies? Um, so probably the dude who did The Lighthouse and The Northman. I'm trying to remember his name. Let me. See. It's Eggers, isn't it? The North... And director. So, let me just bring this up. I just want to make sure his name. Yeah, Robert Eggers. That's it. Um, yeah, he's he's not of Tarantino caliber, but uh, he's definitely got a great visual eye for doing something interesting and different from your usual like standard Hollywood blockbusters. So I think he's probably going to be a name to watch out for. Um, yeah, and probably um, Denise Villeneuve. You know, the guy who did Dune and Blade Runner 2049. Um, again, just uh, an interesting director who's got a real eye for the visuals and, and can tell stories in his way. So these these are probably guys that are going to like become really prominent, I think, in the next in the next five or ten years. Uh, Discount Ron Swanson says, Maybe Canada contracted Hollywood to make these awful shows to help with population control by pushing them into the maid program. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Whoa, that's dark. Uh, Mr. Silver says, There was a young Indiana Jones TV show. That is true, there was, yeah. Um, it was all right from what I remember. Uh, Bass Player says, Speaking of FromSoft, who's ready for Armored Souls? Uh, not me, that's for sure. I'm not really into that stuff. Uh, the Grey Ghost says, Overwatch 2 died on release. Uh, meanwhile, Team Fortress 2 is still pulling over 100,000 players a day despite being 15 years old. That is mental. Um, I guess quality never dies, really. Uh, Claude Simeon says, The Devil's Hour on Amazon with Peter Capaldi was good. Yeah, the, the trailer's really um, intriguing. It's like a guy who can see the future or something. Um, Antriv Singh says, As the year draws to a close, I'd like to thank you legends for sitting through all the shite and misery. So us lot don't have to. Thanks so much. Live long and prosper and a happy new year to you all. Thank you very much, man. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a pleasure to watch all this stuff, but hey, it's uh, it's nice that we can save other people from it. Uh, Morrigan says, Drinker, what will it take to get you and Mauler to watch and comment on Chainsaw Man? Anime has so much to offer. All we need really is time. That's the one thing that we both lack. Um, if we had all the time in the world, we'd watch all these shows for sure. It's just trying to make it happen. Um, Basic Shapes says, Part of what makes Andor great is the fact that everyone dies. It means it automatically can't connect to the Star Trek, sorry, Star Wars um, sequel trilogy, at least not directly. I mean, it's kind of true, yeah. Um, the downside, obviously, is that it's hard to get invested in a character when you know what's going to happen to them. They're going to die soon. Um, yeah. Sad Doggo says, you forgot the greatest movie ever made, The 355. God, yeah. That was another one that's so garbage, it just like got purged from my brain. But yeah, that was a hell of a way to start the year. Absolute flop. Um, Misanthropic Sith says, Reacher. Uh, yeah, Reacher was good. It was a good show. I think we missed out on our conversation before because um, it just kind of fell through the cracks. But yeah, Reacher was a decent enough um, show it was a good adaptation of the source material and they picked a really good actor to play Reacher so I was happy with it um, Angry Bass Andy says Drinker do you have any advice for someone writing their first book yes in fact I made an entire video with my writing advice there so if you go to my second channel it's like advice on how to get published and stuff um, yeah look up that video and it'll tell you pretty much everything I could think of um, Dewey says, Muller, out of random curiosity, what's, uh, why do you follow AOC on Twitter? For the laughs, or do you genuinely agree with her views? So, no idea what Muller's answer would be. I'm assuming it's probably for the lols. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of like why people would follow Trump and, and other people like that. You might not necessarily, like, support the person, but, like, they're a person of public significance. So, um, you know, you're kind of curious to see what they're going to say, I suppose. Um, for Theo says Thunberg and Tate both lost because they're them <laughs> yeah. uh, God that was one of the weirdest rivalries that I've ever seen on social media I, two people that I never imagined would talk to each other um, Ashutosh Tripathi says hey critical drinker any tips for writing sociopathic characters just go on Twitter you'll see plenty of them and you can just base it off that 
Um, DB Bustle says, if Guardians 3 doesn't pan out, there is always the new video game that I highly, highly recommend. Great story and characters. Yeah, some of them are meant to be really good. Um, the Cyber Hobbit says, hey Nerdrotic, I see you got the UC uh, Theoden helmet. Curious of your thoughts and if it fits your head. Also, the rest of the guys, what's your favourite movie collectible, if any? Uh, oh, good question. So, um, I'm not a massive collectibles guy. Like, I've got a few things on the shelf behind me, which you probably can't quite see because it's just out of shot. But um, as gave me a Hot Toys Iron Man um, that's like, you know, you can fully, like, articulate it and stuff. And it's got loads of, um, you know bits and pieces that you can swap out you've got tony stark's head and stuff that you can put on it or iron man's helmet um it, you can have batteries inside it so that the eyes light up and the arc reactor bit lights up and stuff it looks awesome um so that's probably my favorite collectible um as for gary yeah no idea what his would be because he's got a lot of stuff um but yeah i'm it's funny because that started the ball rolling for me and i've started to get more into collecting things you know, than I used to be. And, uh, well, you can kind of see, again, behind me, uh, on that middle shelf there, I've got a power armor suit from Fallout, um, which, again, it was pretty expensive, but it's very, very cool, and the detail on it is incredible. So I do I do like that. Um, Hansman says, The Patient was a great show on Hulu this year. Fair play, I haven't seen that one. Uh, Marty says, writers need to be paid more dollars. Why do actors make so much money for just pretending and reading the writer's lines? Well, because they're draws. I mean, or at least they used to be. Um, it used to be like, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, it's like, holy shit, you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger in your film, or you've got Sylvester Stallone, or you've got Tom Cruise in your film. Um, I'm going to go and see that because I'm a big fan of that actor. So whatever the film is, the, they were box office draws, and that's why they got paid so much money. Um that is kind of changing now because, you know, we don't really live in the era of the movie star anymore. We we live in the era of characters um, that people just play, you know. So it'd be like, oh, we're going to go and see the latest Superman film or the latest Iron Man film or whatever else it might be. Um, but yeah, that's generally why they got paid so much money. D Brown says, thoughts on Jack Ryan series? Just started on season three. Seems to have more action than the first two. I've asked Gary twice. Guess I'll find out in the square up. Um, yeah, I mean, I've only watched bits and pieces of Jack Ryan. I started to get into season one, and I quite like it. I like John Krasinski in the role. Um, you know, I was a fan of the Tom Clancy books anyway, so it's kind of cool to see that character back. Um, obviously in a more action-oriented role, because normally he's just like the, the analyst guy who's figuring stuff out. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like it, so yeah, I'm looking forward to watching more. I don't know about the rest of the guys, though. A Sour Cream Citizen says, My brother-in-law said that Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness was better than Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> okay. Uh, because No Way Home was just fan service and Multiverse of Madness was classic Sam Raimi. Uh, I think you need to get him to watch like the, the Evil Dead series or the first couple of Spider-Man movies. Uh, those are classic Sam Raimi. Or Darkman even. Um, all of that is classic. This was heavily diluted Sam Raimi. Um, there was little little flashes of his personality that came through occasionally, but for the most part, it was your your stock standard Marvel template of a film. Um, so yeah, your <laughs> your brother-in-law is wrong, sir. Uh, Chris Nicholson says, "Merry Christmas, drinker and crew." Thank you. I'm um, considering that both Andor and House of the Dragon turned out better than expected. Is there a chance that any other Doom project could turn out okay? Indiana Jones, for example. I mean, there's always a chance, like. When, it, when I see things like the trailer and I hear that these films get announced, I make my prediction um, on what I think they're going to be like. But hey, I'm always ready to be proven wrong. You know, I predicted that Prey was absolutely going to flop and be terrible. Uh, and it turned out to be blandly okay. <laughs> you know, so there is that. Uh, we didn't think much of House of the Dragon. It seemed like that was going to be a flop. But uh, yeah, as, uh, as you pointed out there, it turned out to be really good. So... There's always a possibility that something will turn out great. Um, and so I don't want to discount that. I don't want to just, you know, I guess I'm saying I would always keep an open mind when I watch something and I'm open to the possibility that it could could turn out okay. But I don't think it will. That's, uh, I guess, the best way of saying it. Um, also from D Brown says, 
I tried rewatching Game of Thrones, stuck at season six. I like watching media and then follow up with uh, your analysis, including Gary, Mahler, As, Disparu, and all the Friday night crew analysis. Any other watch suggestions? Well, I mean, like we said, um, Arcane is a good one. Reacher is a good one. Uh, the Terminal List. Uh, House of the Dragon, obviously. Um, Midnight Mass, I very much recommend. So all oh, those shows are worth your time, I would say. Uh, Ofer Re Ravid says, Creed 3 will be a movie. Uh, it definitely will be a movie. That's the best I can say there. Um, yeah, I still don't fully understand the point of the Creed films. You're just doing the whole Rocky formula all over again with a different character. It's it's really weird. Um, yeah, I think Rocky's not even going to be in Creed 3. So I guess the, the character's just died off or whatever. So it will be really interesting to see if it can stand on its own two legs. You know, without Rocky there to support it, because really, you're not going to convince me that anyone watched that first Creed movie for any other reason than Stallone was in it and he was reprising his role as Rocky. That was the whole reason people watched it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't imagine it's going to be a huge hit, but who knows, we'll see. Mr. Wise Guy said, did you guys see Ambulance? I thought it was good. It was okay, yeah. Um, that was a Michael Bay movie, wasn't it? Um, all the... You know, you had, uh, yeah, Megan Fox was in it again, um, looking totally out of place as an as a EMT. But, yeah, good action, I guess. Um, it was fine, just a stock Michael Bay movie, I suppose. Um, I want to see him do more films, like more high-profile films, because they seem to be awfully quiet at the moment. It's weird. Objectively, a cat says... As a writer, what do you think of a fantasy civilization based based on ancient Assyria with magic? Uh, it's fine, I guess. <laughs> I don't really have any strong opinions about that one, I guess. Uh, Brian Blair says, Drinker, you magnificent bastard. Are you going to do any more happy hour episodes in the future? Yes, I absolutely am. I really like how you and special guests go over old classic movies. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll certainly be doing more. Um, I enjoy them. It's nice to just pick a, a, an old classic and relive it and talk about the good and the bad and the ugly in it. Um, so yeah, there'll definitely be more. Um, but like I said, I think in my last catch-up stream, we will also be doing open bar on a weekly basis now rather than... <laughs> what the fuck? Really? I mean, this is this is what I have to deal with here. The like staff rebel against me. The doggos are just pining for attention and, uh, and well... You get shameless public nudity like that. It's disgusting! Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to be doing open bar on a weekly basis, so there'll be a slightly like fewer windows for me to do other things like, um, like happy hour, but I will definitely make time for them. And also more um, VIP lounge, because uh, yeah, that's always good fun too. Um, Joe Themig says... Great show, fellas. Raiders uh, is better than Crusade, largely because Salah and Brody were treated more seriously and not turned into dumb comedic relief. Yeah, that is a little bit of a, a shame, particularly for Brody, because he is kind of treated as just this goofy tag-along sidekick um, who just gets in trouble and gets captured and stuff, whereas he was a much more serious character in the first film. So yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. Idog says... Uh, Hayao Miyazaki uh, has a movie coming out next year, but it only has a Japan release date so far. Uh, fair enough, okay. Papa Piker says, Recent archaeological evidence places Atlantis in the eye of the Sahara, where previously there were rivers. Lost opportunity for an indie flick. There's so many lost opportunities. See if they'd done, like, Indie 4 in the mid-90s, I think they could have done something great. Uh, when Harrison was still young enough. Uh, when, you know, when Steven Spielberg still cared. Uh, when George Lucas still cared, you know, that would have been a great time because it was a real dry spell anyway. Like, George wasn't doing any more, um, any more Star Wars at the time. Um, I don't know if he was gearing up at that point for the the prequels, but that would have been late 90s. So, yeah, that could have been a good time to do it. Um, Motalicious says, Owen Benjamin was right about Andrew Tate. Uh, I'm not sure what he said about him, but yeah. Ziggy said, Favourite old movies. I watched Zulu again the other day and absolutely loved it. Also have a talisker on me. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, Zulu is an absolute classic. Uh, Great Escape, obviously. Um, the Longest Day. Uh, I watched 12 Angry Men for, for like reviewing purposes. Totally loved that. Um, 
I'm trying to think of other ones that I've recommended in the past. I did It's a Wonderful Life because, you know, one of the best Christmas movies ever made. Um, the Maltese Falcon, that's a classic. Love that one. Um, Where Eagles Dare, another like classic war movie. Um, yeah, really love that. Um, trying to think of any others that have really stuck in my head. Um, yeah, if more come up, I'll, I'll say them as I go along. Uh, Glenn Glenithan says the only good thing about TLJ was the big middle finger it gave to TFA. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure that was a good thing long term. Um, Party Alm CV says you guys aren't going to buy the Blu-rays, TLJ lover. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, certainly not. Uh, I would be happy for that movie to blink out of existence. Eddie Brock says, Moore, please say. Uh, it's what I do that defines me in your iconic Gotham High Bruce Wayne voice. <laughs> oh, sorry, he's uh, obviously not available. I'll do it as a drinker, though. It's what I do that defines me. There you go. Uh, Mr. Oaks says, I appreciate the warnings of bad shows, but I love the recommendations for the good ones. Thanks. Uh, for example, I would have probably skipped Preacher. <laughs> I think you were trying to say Reacher there. If you guys hadn't recommended it, thank you. Nice. Um... Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to recommend things occasionally. Uh, John Leonard says, when are we going to get the Drinker Fixies God of War Ragnarok? I don't know. I mean, yet yeah, so far I haven't found anything that needs fixing. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll wait until I've completed it. Ofer Rafid says, the Black Phone was a very good movie. Any idea when you're going to do its review? Um, I need to watch it first. I've never even heard of it. Uh, JD says, Harrison Ford never cared about Star Wars, but if you mess with Indiana Jones, he'll fly a plane into your house. Man knows his priorities. Yeah, I know that he's got a much better connection with uh, with Indy than he does with Han Solo. Uh, so that's fair enough, but still doesn't mean that the Dial of Destiny is going to be good. Diano says, Cameron hates guns now, so a Terminator that uses bows and arrows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a weird statement from that man. He is... I don't know if it's just like he's mellowed in his old age um, or if he's fully drunk the Hollywood Kool-Aid or he's just saying what he thinks people want to hear now. Whatever it is, God, it's so disheartening from a guy who made Aliens and Terminator 2 to say stuff like that. Um, yeah, I want more movies that fetishize guns. Uh, I want big gearing up scenes where there's just like ammunition and, and guns getting loaded and, and grenades and stuff. Like, yeah, that stuff's cool. That's why people watch action movies. That's the whole point of them. Um, that's fun. Um, so, yeah, give us more of that stuff. Give the people what they want. Uh, Mythe Yander says, remake of Banditas with Karen Fukuara and Jessica Hedwig. I mean... I don't know, if you say so, man. Uh, D Question says, Movie tickets in New Zealand are expensive and you gents uh, have saved me a lot of money. So thank you so much. Big hello from New Zealand. Thank you very much, man. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I could save you some dollars. Fourth 1000 says, Drinker, curious about your thoughts on the female protagonist of Terrifier 2. I think she's pretty great as she gets put through the ringer. Yeah, I haven't seen Terrifier 2, actually. I've, I've heard generally good things about it, I think. So... Um, yeah, I'd be fine for watching it, um, and then I can give you my proper thoughts on it. But hey, it'd be nice to get some good female protagonists these days, prove that it can still be done. Igor Pavic says, what's your opinion on the movies of Denise Villeneuve and Quentin Tarantino? That's weird since I compared the two earlier. Um, Villeneuve, yeah, uh, in terms of his movie making style, he's a very slow paced kind of guy. He likes his lingering landscape shots and, and real like big establishing epic scenes. Um, Blade Runner 2049 was absolutely laden with them. So was Dune, actually. Um, it, it results in a fairly slow pace of a film, but um, I'm okay with that. When you want big, epic grandeur in your scenes, it's it's fine. Um, and as for Quentin Tarantino, as a filmmaker, yeah, man, he's like one of the one of the greats of the modern era. Like really inventive, brilliant casting. He's got a great eye for characters and the right actors to play them. Um, Dialogue is superb, obviously. Um, so yeah, just a really interesting, fun director to watch when he's when he's at work. Um, you know, you could argue that he's he's maybe indulging some of his tendencies a bit too much now, and and you get movies that are perhaps a bit a bit too long and a bit too bloated, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But uh, you know, you go back to his classic era in the nineties, and yeah, it's tough to beat him at this point. 
Um, the Hobbit 45 gave me a super sticker for four dollars, so thank you. Um, and that was the last one, I think. So, yeah, we made it through, powered through that one. Um, yeah, thank you guys for for sending all those amazing super chats. Like as always, it's it's really appreciated. Um, stuff like this obviously allows us to keep doing things like open bar on a regular basis and. Yeah, like I said before, we're ramping up production on that, so we'll be doing it on a weekly basis. So every Thursday, um, you'll be able to tune in and watch us if that's your thing. Uh, hopefully, we won't bore the arse out of people, and we'll keep it entertaining, and we'll give a, a good lineup of guests coming on each time. And um, yeah, thank you very much for all of it. But for now, I guess I'll, I'll finish up there, and I'll sign off. So that is all I've got for today. So for me and the Lazy Critical Doggos, go away now.